Hey there YouTube, it's Bobby aka Paginator looking extremely whited out and I'm here for a book expedition. This is going to be a vlog where if everything goes according to plan I will be able to visit seven bookstores. Now I'm coming to you from a hotel room and I'm going to be spending the night and I've hit up my first bookstore already and I'll be hitting six more tomorrow. So just so you're um, kind of aware of like location, I'm in the city of Layton, Utah, which is a little bit north of Salt Lake, and I'll be venturing down that way tomorrow. I am taking a couple days off work for some self-care and a much needed break, and I decided that part of that was going to be a book expedition because what could be better for my mental health than, than looking at books and picking up some books and yeah. So, I just went to the Leighton Barnes and & Noble, and just as a heads up, I'm not going to be picking up as many books per store as I did at this one. I let myself go a little bit crazy, um, which I probably shouldn't have done, but it is what it is. So, I picked up five titles at Barnes & Noble, and then since I'm going to six stores tomorrow, I'm going to try to regulate my spending. I don't even have to buy a book at every store I go to. Um, I am going to aim for getting more middle grade than any other age category. I did pick up two YA titles and three middle grade at Barnes & Noble today. And then tomorrow I'm going to be trying to focus mostly on middle grade. Why you might be wondering? Well, most of my bookish subscription boxes come with YA books, so that gives me a good supply there. And I, one of my personal reading goals for 2021 is to read more middle grade. So this is just going to help me in that quest. So maybe I'll just slide in a little clip of that particular bookstore and walking around and seeing the middle grade section for you and then we'll talk about what about. Alright, so we'll start with the YA titles that I picked up. This is Fat Chance Charlie Vega by Crystal, Crystal Maldonado. I am always excited when I see a plus size character and especially a plus size girl, being one myself, I identify. Um, and really, I started reading the dust jacket of this and after like the first two sentences, I went, oh, this is very similar to me. So it says, Charlie Vega is a lot of things, smart, funny, artistic, ambitious, fat. People sometimes have a problem with that last one, especially her mom. Charlie wants a good relationship with her body, but it's hard, and her mom leaving a billion weight loss shakes on her dresser doesn't help. The world and everyone in it have ideas about what she should look like. Thinner, lighter, slimmer face, straighter haired, be smaller, be wider, be quieter. But there's one person who's always in Charlie's corner, her best friend Amelia. Slim, popular, athletic, totally dope. So when Charlie starts a tentative relationship with cute classmate Brian, the first worthwhile guy to notice her, everything is perfect until she learns one thing. He asked Amelia out first. So is she his second choice or what? Does he even really, he really see her? Because it's time people did. Now, I can tell you, being a fat girl whose best friend was a size zero, in high school and who always got asked out and to dance and things and me being the fat girl that was standing there just watching and pretending to be so happy that my friend was getting to dance with so many boys it was rough i am already identifying with the character and i haven't even like read the first page of the book so i feel like this one might be one that i really am going to be careful when i read it because if it's too hard hitting I might just be blubbering in tears over it. The other YA title that I picked up was Of Ice and Stars, oh that's not right, Of Ice and Shadows by Audrey Colthurst. This is the sequel to Of Fire and Stars, that's where the stars came from. Um, I loved Of Fire and Stars, It's if you're unfamiliar it's about a girl who's set to marry 
a young man in order to form a political alliance, but she ends up falling for his sister. It's such a great story, and I am so, like, I've been wanting to read the sequel for forever, and I saw this floppy paperback sitting there on the Barnes & Noble shelves, and it was just calling my name. So here we go. Now onto the middle grade. This first one was recommended by Jade and Gavin from Jade Ray Reads and How to Train Your Gavin. It is A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. This is a trilogy. They only had the first one in my other Wanderings tomorrow. If I can see the other books in the series, I might pick them up. But this um, just seems like it would be really cute. So I'll read you a little bit of The Dust Jacket. All Betty Wittershins wants is an adventure, one that takes her far away from the gloomy island where she's always lived. But instead of an adventure, Betty and her sisters, Fliss and Charlie, are each given a magical object, a carpet bag, a set of nesting dolls, and a mirror. And these gifts come with their own terrible secret. Their family is haunted by a deadly curse. The sisters set out to change their fate, but when mysterious prisoner claims he can't can help them, they find themselves in great danger, and in order to break the curse and stay alive, they must unravel a mystery that goes back centuries, one that involves shipwrecks, smugglers, and sorcery of the most perilous kind. That just sounds fun. The other two middle grade books I got are also part of a series. Um, last year I read The Train to Impossible Places, and this is the next book, The Great Brain Robbery. Great title. Um, the train to impossible places is just that. It's a train that goes to lots of impossible places. And Susie is the main character. And this train comes through her living room quite literally. And she hops on, on for the ride and gets brought into this world. Um, I believe the third one is Delivery to the Lost City. Um, let me see if I've gotten the order of that right. Hang on a second. Yes, this is book number two. Okay, The Great Brain Robbery, and then we go to Delivery to the Lost City. I didn't look for the um, number three at Barnes & Noble. I didn't, I'm not sure if it's out yet, and I kind of like to have all of this series in paperback anyway. Um, it bothers me when my series don't match each other, so there's that. And lastly, I picked up School for Good and Evil, One True King. This is number six in the School for Good and Evil series by Soman Chainani. And it is fantastic. This is a Barnes & Noble exclusive edition with a deluxe poster and ultimate fan test. I'm wondering if we can find the poster. Aha. Okay, so the poster is literally attached inside the book. And... We have the two swans, which is iconic image for this series, and the two houses. If you're unfamiliar with the series, it is about a school that trains good and evil characters in fairy tales. And if you get chosen to go for a school for good, you're probably going to end up being a prince or a princess or some kind of good helper character. And same is true if you get chosen for a school for evil. Sophie and Agatha are our two main characters, and they are um, selected to go to the school when they are much younger, because again, this is book six. Um, and fun fantasy fairy tale twisty craziness ensues. So there we have it. That is leg one of this journey. We'll continue in the morning, and for now, I'm going to go either read or listen to a book. I haven't decided yet. See you in a bit. Good morning. We're in Bountiful, Utah, and we're outside the Book Garden Bookstore, which is a super cute store. That was such a fun store to go in and just like all the little areas with the books and it it's a used bookstore so it smells like old books and just oh so fun so it picked up um three books which i think is pretty decent i mean it's a used bookstore so they're going to be discounted but 
and they're obviously not going to have every book in the world, but um, I found a middle grade one. This is Bo at Ballard Creek, and it is by Kirkpatrick Hill. It is about this little girl, Bo, who is raised by a couple of miners in Alaska, and so we're going to have some, like, cold, wintry mining fun, I guess, as we read this, and it's kind of one of those create your own family stories because she was headed for an orphanage when she was taken in by a couple of miners, so... Um, yeah, that looks like fun. She's going to be learning Eskimo language, and you can see she kind of sticks out. She's the only white girl amongst the Eskimo people, but she'll have a good time and hopefully make a family there. I also picked up this very old copy of Emma by Jane Austen, and it is very old and falling apart and gorgeous, and I could not resist because when are, when am I going to find another copy of Emma like that like yeah and then the last one is an adult romance but it looks just super cozy and cute and it was five bucks so I got the bookworm crush it's a floppy paperback and it's by Lisa Brown Roberts and we have a shy bookworm Amy and she's about to compete for a chance to interview her favorite author who hasn't spoken to the press in years but she doesn't know how to like build her level of confidence so she learn turns to a competition coach in the form of a guy that she's been secretly crushing on a local surfer celebrity Toph Nichols who is a player a heartthrob like like makes her forget how to breathe kind of a thing and uh, he agrees to help and teach her to feel more confident. So we're probably going to get a romance between these two. And we'll see if she wins the competition to interview her favorite author. So that's what I picked up at the Book Garden. I am now going to be heading into Salt Lake City. And first up will be Trolley Square, which is a really fun place to go for go shop if you're in Salt Lake. Like, really fun. So here we go. Alright, so we're outside of Trolley Square and we're going to go find Weller Bookworks. I actually have never been in this store before, so I'm just as excited to see it as you are. Okay, so we just went shopping at Weller Bookworks and I'm now kind of standing in this trolley outside the trolley museum that is not open. So I grabbed two books here. Even though there was a massive selection, there just wasn't a whole lot that I was excited about. I did pick up Front Desk by Kelly Yang, which has won an award and has been reported to be a really great middle grade book about a girl who lives in a hotel. Um, a motel, excuse me. And then... This other one I got is a, not a middle grade. It is an illustrated edition of Jane Eyre because I collect weird editions of Jane Eyre. So that's what I got. All right, we've made it to Central Book Exchange. I am not going to make myself buy something if I don't see something that I'm really, really interested in, but we'll see what we can find. back in the car again so I did not get a good feeling while I was in Central Book Exchange I'm sure it's a lovely shop run by lovely people but my anxiety was starting to ramp up a little bit and I was like you know what I'm gonna cut this off before it even gets bad it was very cramped close quarters which is probably what I was feeling off about so now I am at Frost Books and this store just looking at from the outside is adorable I'm gonna get out of the car and give you a shot of just the exterior because it's so cute to look at from the outside I can't wait to see what's on the inside
so that store was just really fun. Um, I picked up one middle grade book and I'll get it out of the bag here so I can show you. It's The Miraculous by Jess Redman. Um, I have heard this author talked about by Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin and this just sounds really cute. It's about Wonder Ellis who's a miracologist. In a journal he calls the Miraculous, he records stories of the inexplicable and the extraordinary and he believes every single one. But then his newborn sister dies at only eight days old. If that can happen, then miracles can't exist, so Wonder gets rid of the miraculous. He stops believing. But then he meets Faye, who is an outspoken girl who wears a cape, and she has losses of her own, and they find an abandoned house by a cemetery, and a mysterious old woman who just might be a witch, and this old woman asks for the help. So this sounds like it's gonna be touching a little bit, maybe heartbreaking due to the loss of the baby sister, and hopefully a really good read. Well, hey, I'm in the car again, again, again. I'm just outside of the Sugar House Barnes & Noble. This is one that I've been to many, many times. It's bigger than the one I went to yesterday. It's a two-story one, and I have vlogged in here before going up the escalators into YA land, so um, I don't know what's going to happen in here as far as book buying and stuff, and maybe I'll buy a lot, maybe I'll buy nothing, who knows. But this is my second-to-last stop on my journey, so here we go. Who could have predicted this? I bought nine books. Eight were middle grades, so I'm sticking to my middle grade goal pretty well. And the one that is not is kind of the theme of my day and reason for being here. Um, shopping and stuff today. So this is Calm, 50 Mindfulness and Relaxation Exercises to De-Stress and Unwind. This was in the bargain book section and it looks like a good one for me to pick up and look at. All right, so some of these books were kind of on my radar and other ones were just ones that I saw that looked kind of fun. This is um, Ronan Boyle in the Swamp of Certain Death by Thomas Lennon. Yes, that Thomas Lennon, the actor. I don't think I'm gonna go through the blurbs in all of these because there's nine of them. Then we have The Mysterious Appearance, Disappearance of Aiden S by David Levithan. Um, he usually is a YA writer, but this is in the middle grade section, so it better be middle grade or I'm going to be upset. And we have Kiki's Delivery Service, which of course is the inspiration for the Studio Ghibli movie. We have Scritch Scratch by Lindsay Curry. We have Closer to Nowhere by Ellen Hopkins. Now she's usually really, really YA. Um, very hard issue tackler, but writes in verse. And gosh, these girls behind me are really noisy. You want to like go in the store and go away? Apparently they're too busy chatting. Anyway, Ellen Hopkins is a very good writer. Um, I'm interested to see how her middle grade goes. And we have Cinders and Sparrows by Stefan Bachman. And this was also recommended by Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin. And we have a couple of middle grade graphic novels. Joe, which is an adaptation of Little Women, sort of, it says here, by Kathleen Gross. And lastly, we have the Weirn Books, Be Wary of the Silent Woods, Volume 1, by Svetlana Shmakova. Shm I'm so sorry, Svetlana, I probably said your last name wrong. So that was what I hauled at Barnes & Noble. One more bookstore, it's just going to be Dolly's in Park City, and I will chat to you again when I get there. Well, we found the last bookstore. This is Dolly's in Park City. It took a little bit of finagling because Park City is a confusing city, but we're going to head in and see what we can see.
so Dolly's was super fun. I got three middle grade graphic novels. I have Beetle and the Hollow Bones by Eliza Lane. Fantastic Tales of Nothing by Alejandra Green and Fanny Rodriguez. And Little Witches Magic in Concord by Lee Dragoon. This is a Little Women retelling. So I have two middle grade graphic novels that are Little Women retellings. That seems kind of fun and exciting. Um, I've spent enough money on books and oh my gosh, that bookstore was like had an adjoining doorway with a candy company, like homemade sugar and chocolate and like all this stuff. It smelled so heavenly. I didn't buy anything though. I didn't even go in there. I was like, nope, 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 nope. So now it's time to head back towards Wyoming. The, um, signs along the way have been saying that the highway is going to be closed at Evanston. I can go for walks around Walmart or, you know, do other fun and exciting things if I need to stop in Evanston for a little while until the freeway opens up. But keep your fingers crossed for me that it's going to be open because I really just, I'm ready to go home. Hey there. Well, as you can see, I made it home. I was really lucky when I got to Evanston. The freeway had opened up, so I was able to just scoot on home. I stopped at the post office, and as very good luck would have it, there is a bookish package here for me to open. This is from another Salt Lake City bookstore, my favorite bookstore, the King's English. They are not open for in-person shopping. Otherwise, I definitely would have been going there today as well, but... I did place an order with them recently, so great timing. We get to include their books in here also. Um, now, I'm not sure about all the independent bookstores that I went to today, but I know with the King's English they do ship books, hence the package arriving here to me. And they, sh they will ship media mail, which is, I think, $9 flat rate. So it's not a bad deal for getting books shipped to you from your favorite store, right? So we have Isabel Ibanez Written in Starlight, which is the sequel to Woven in Moonlight, and uh, it's lovely. The first book is set in Bolivia, and it's um, magical, and there's lots of good food descriptions, and it's just, yeah, it, it was an excellent book, so I'm really pleased to be getting to this one, which is, again, Written in Starlight. I also ordered from them a Wolf Force Spell by Kara Sutton, and this is a middle grade novel. It is about Zima who, well maybe I'll just read it. It says, since she was a pup, Zima has been taught to fear humans, especially witches, but when her family is threatened, she has no choice but to seek help from the witch Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga never does magic for free, but it just so happens that she needs a wolf's keen nose for a secret plan she's brewing. Before Zima knows what happens, the witch casts a switching spell and run off into the woods while Zima is left behind in Baba, Baba Yaga's hut and Baba Yaga's body. Meanwhile, a young village girl named Nadia is also seeking the witch's help, when, and when she meets Zima in Baba Yaga's form, they discover that they face a common enemy. With danger closing in, Zima must unite the wolves, the witches, and the villagers against an evil that threatens them all. So definitely based on a Russian folklore, which is something I'm very intrigued by. And the last book is Curse of the Night Witch Emblem Island by Alex Astor. This is, um, Eb Emblem Island is a place where people are born knowing their fates. They have lifelines that show the course of their lives and emblems dictate how they will spend their lives. So our main character is Tor Luna, and it says, Tor Luna was born with a leadership emblem, but he hates his mark and is determined to choose a new path for himself. So on the annual New Year's Eve celebration, Tor wishes to be rid of his emblem and given a different gift. The next morning, Tor wakes up to discover a new marking on his skin, the symbol of a curse that has shortened his lifeline, giving him a week before an untimely death. There is only one way to break the curse, and it requires a trip to the notorious Night Witch. With just his village's terrifying ancient stories as a guide and his two friends, Angle and Melda, by his side, Tor must travel across the unpredictable Emblem Island filled with wicked creatures he only knows through myths in a race against his dwindling lifeline. This is the start of a series, so do I want to read it straight away? Do I want to wait till the next book comes out with the craziness of my life right now? Who knows what kind of time I've got. So that has been quite the book expedition adventure. I, I know I spent more than I should have, but I don't care. I, um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm taking two days off of work 
to do some self-care and just, like get my anxiety under control and I feel absolutely fabulous fabulous right now and I've had so much fun so I hope you've enjoyed this time with me and I hope that you are having a wonderful magical and bookish day happy reading adios